New Day Northwest is back. Now from the AAA Travel Alcove, here's Margaret Larson. Welcome back. This month, believe it or not, marks the 70th anniversary of King 5 Television. When Channel 5 launched on November 25th, 1948, it became the first television station in the Pacific Northwest. The original call letters of KRSC changed to King eight months later. I'm so glad. It's much easier to say. <laughs> Launching a broadcasting legacy that saw the first female news anchor in the U.S., award-winning children's and local programming, and decades of top-notch news teams. We celebrate King's legacy and that of its founder, Dorothy Bullitt, a widow raising three kids who saw a new gadget called a TV in a shop window and decided to invest in its future, a future I've been honored to be part of as a news anchor and host of New Day Now. And I welcome somebody with an enormous legacy in our news department here, King 5 News anchor, Lori Matsukawa. It's so good to see you. Thank you. And so you're doing these great stories about what's happened over these 70 years, and in particular, the women who have been broadcast pioneers. And let's start with Dorothy Bullitt. I mean, people have to imagine what it was like. This is 1948, but it all started back during the Depression when Dorothy Bullitt lost three men in her life, her father, her husband, and her older brother wow. in short succession. So at the age of 40, she was left with three kids and no college education, and she had to run the family business. And so it's she- It's phenomenal, isn't I it? Know. And I know. So today would, it would be a tough thing, but then when there was very little support or social acceptance for this. Right, and little experience, but she was a trailblazer in that way. She just kind of went to work every day and did what she had to do, which we t kind of take for granted now, but right. that was then. But God bless her. And then in 1971, she hired Jean Anderson as the very first female local news anchor in the country. In the country. And when Jean recalls that, she goes, uh, it's nice to be first, but it's better to be able to do the job. So there was a lot of pressure to be, you know, knowledgeable, to be right. good at what she did. To Imagine the scrutiny at that right. point. Right. And she said the funniest story that she ch shared was about when she was first pregnant. They didn't know what to do with this woman <laughs> in the big tent dress. So they lowered her chair and raised the desk <laughs> to cover her stomach. So she looked like she was peering out over the top exactly. of it. Well, she has opened a door that oh. women have benefited um, from, from decades all across this country and the world. And then you joined King at a time um, when the station was looking to make some changes as well. Tell me about that. Okay, when King first started, they had one newscast a day that lasted 15 minutes. Now we have 11 newscasts a day, not to mention our online presence and our social media right. presence. So there's just so much more news. And the technology was changing. We were going from film cameras to electronic I remember, media, I was right remember? on the edge of that. EMG yes. was yep. electronic news gathering, so things started picking up. The pace of coverage was picking up. Uh, how quickly you could transmit news by satellite. It was just a time of tremendous. It's change. amazing. Let's look at some big stories. We'll go through these quickly, but the eruption in Mount St. Helens, obviously right. huge, 1980. Exactly. Mount St. Helens was huge. King made a huge commitment. They put Jeff Renner and a photographer and an engineer in an RV. And they lived on the mountain for That's about incredible. a month. And by just luck, pure luck, the engineer asked for the weekend off for his anniversary. And uh, they said, yeah, sure, come on over. So Saturday, they left the mountain. Sunday morning, it erupted. Great. They would have been killed. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so mudslide, another huge tragedy, but one in which the community responded with such love. This was one of those that totally unexpected, but uh, it was interesting. Heather Graff was the reporter that first went there, and she rem I remember she called the station and said, um, I think we have to send all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. This is huge. We had no idea when it happened how gigantic this slide was. Incredible, and you think right. about that now in comparison with the California fires. Right. Um, WTO protests, we were both there uh, for that. The Mardi Gras riots in Pioneer Square in 2001, big right. deals. 89, early 90s. I think Seattle was being put on the map in, in a rather negative way, but you know, this was WTO, President Clinton was here, the heads of state were here, and this is the kind of welcome that they received. Right. And people had to weave their way through buses and police, run the gauntlet just to get to their meetings. It was a very scary time. And it just exploded. I remember running through Pike Place Market and, and tear gas was curling up around the public market sign. It was just so strange. You and Jean Anderson both took groundbreaking trips to China, which I want to mention. Let's talk about Jean going there in the early 70s. Right. This was in 
1978 was her first trip to China. They had never seen a person with blonde hair. Wow. And so she was surrounded all the time by curious Chinese residents. <laughs> and she was there to, on the orders of Dorothy Bullitt, to find the truth about China. And it was just really groundbreaking because they were one of the first, you know, American news crews to yeah. go to China. From a local station. From and then your station. trip when you went with then Governor Gary Locke and the First Lady, Mona Locke. This was amazing because one of the fi stops he made besides Beijing, which is what you're seeing here, was when he went to his ancestral village. He was a rock star. He was the first. Still is. Oh, yeah. First Chinese American governor in the United States. He was a rock star. They had to, like, hold back the crowds. The police had to like hold hands, and <laughs> form a chain to keep the crowds back from swarming Governor Locke as he walked all around. And he went to all of these major cities and got to meet the president of China, Jiang Zemin, at the time. There are so amazing. many amazing stories. Thank you for telling them and for being such a stalwart oh. and a rock star in your own right in this community for so long. And thanks for Appreciate being part it. of King all these years. Tonight's Happy show to do it. Yeah, tonight's show is about the big stories and tomorrow we talk about technology. It's gonna be so cool. So Lori is gonna look back at those stories for the past seventy years. Watch her on King Five News and you can find links online. We'll be right back.